Hey guys, my name is Nick, and welcome to Watch This Now. Let me start out by saying I am so late on this video. So late, in fact, that another episode of The Sinner has already aired, and we got another one coming. So, let me not waste any time with any of the backstory or anything. If you have not watched any of my previous episode reviews for Season 3 of The Sinner, well, you should do that. Give me the views, and also get caught up, because now we're diving into Episode 5. The last episode ended with a dead body, as all episodes should, and we know Jamie is responsible, because he went to this party where there was this borderline psychic dude who was, like, reading his aura and, like, ghost whispering with Nick. I don't know. It was very not Christian, but... All we know is that dude was straight up beaten to death. And we know Jamie did it because it's confirmed in the beginning of this episode. He goes from the scene of the crime to his office at the school he works at. And he washes off and cleans up and everything. And then dumps all of the evidence that he has in a river. Jamie's wife, Leela, is getting ready for the day. And so she heads downstairs to see Jamie just there cradling their newborn baby. Even though he was gone, straight up vanished in the Bermuda Triangle for the previous 24 hours, and she's like, where have you been? And he gives her some fuckboy bullshit excuse, being all, oh, I had to go clear my head. Like, I'm sure she would love to go clear her head, but wait, it gets worse because she even finds some straight up blood on his body, on his person, specks of blood, and she's like, what's that about? And he says this. This is, this is the single dumbest thing that I have ever heard. And I'm from Michigan. He says that he was bit by a mosquito and he over scratched it. So he's bleeding. I wish that characters in TV shows and movies had the same bullshit detector that I have because it's gone through the roof right now. Ambrose goes to work at the station where he's questioned by his higher-ups who are all like, what were you up to last night? And he's like, oh, just working, even though he was following Jamie around the city all night outside of his jurisdiction. And then that dead guy turned up, so you know, Ambrose is in trouble for being a bad detective. But hey, lesson learned, just don't let dead people end up in your wake. In our first flashback scene of the episode, we see Jamie go back to the party where his future victim is, and he's like, hey, I need to talk to you. You need to read my aura some more and everything. And the dude isn't really into it, but he reluctantly agrees, and we know where this is going, but this is the setup. So Ambrose and Jamie have another one of their casual meetups where they just talk about how, you know, Jamie should be turning himself in, but Jamie's like, I'm not just gonna, like, throw myself in jail. Who are you? What do you know? Are you kidding me? So Ambrose is hanging out with his lady friend Sonia who calls him out for being not just connected with her but also with Jamie. She's like, wait a minute, do you just get like way too involved in your cases? Is that like why we're dating? And it's like, yes Sonia, that is the entire point of this show. Jamie is visited by the detective of the jurisdiction of the murder, and she will be referred to as Lady Detective. And so she ends up talking to Jamie, and he tries to, like, play it all off. But she does get him to submit a DNA sample, which we can only hope will fuck him over. Sonia goes to visit Leela at her shop that she owns, and we see that Leela runs, like, an essential oils shop or some shit. I mean... What a fantasy! But Sonia is up to some Glenn Close shit because she shows up all, oh, I just need a moisturizer. And then she's immediately like, oh, wait, but actually, your husband dug a grave on my property. And of course, Leela is horrified. Next, Ambrose goes to visit the lady detective with flash drives of security footage and evidence that he can give her to try to push her investigation in his direction, and she's all, excuse me, I got this, and he's all, but I would like to take over it, please. Jamie comes home to Leela, who is sitting there waiting for him with her man-nanny friend, and she confronts him about what Sonia told him, and he's all, but remember that time you totally cheated on me a couple of years ago, and I totally stuck it out with you? Don't you totally want to stick it out with me? And Leela's like, fuck that! She kicks his ass right out the house, as she should. In another flashback scene, Jamie is sitting there with the psychic dude who is channeling Nick, and Jamie's getting all worked up, thinking that he is going to hear something profound out of this, but 
Jamie is just on the edge. That's all this is. He is just on the edge as he's been for the previous five episodes. He is so on the verge of a breakdown. Like that episode of Saved by the Bell when Jesse starts taking pills. I'm so excited! Ambrose and Sonia hang out again and she tells him, I went and visited that dude's wife and, you know, told her everything, maybe disrupted their lives, who knows, no big deal. And Ambrose is appropriately like, what in the fuck are you doing? And they have a bit of a disagreement, but they still kiss at the end of the scene. And you know, this relationship is not only forced, but rushed, but I totally am into it. I dig it. I have to hand it to the actors for manufacturing this solid chemistry because it works for me. Then Jamie gets straight up fired. I mean, politely, but he has pulled into the principal's office, so to speak, or actually, I mean, he does work at a school, and he's told to go on his paternity leave starting now. And of course, he doesn't take it well, but Jamie doesn't do anything right. Shocker. And this is where things get interesting, but not really at all, because now Jamie is pulled to the police station to talk with Lady Detective, and she's grilling him about the security camera footage and whatnot. And Ambrose also goes to the police station where his higher-ups straight up are bitching him out. They're just like, Dude, what are you doing? You are running around, you've gone rogue, you can't be doing this, you should know better, hello. And they both seem totally screwed in this moment, but it amounts to nothing. Like, immediately, they go from both being in huge trouble to Jamie just being let go because they don't have any evidence against him. And Ambrose is just like, well, you know, I mean, I guess, you know, I did what I did, but hey, I gotta go pick up my grandson from the train station. Bye! We flash back again to the party where Jamie is talking to the psychic guy who is channeling Nick and telling him, basically, just go through with your deepest, darkest desires. Do it. All that stuff you want to do, do it. And he is about to say something, but stops himself, and it freaks Jamie out. He's like, wait, no, you have to tell me everything. And it's like, he just told you to go through with all of your deepest, darkest desires. But no, Jamie freaks out and kills the dude instead. He picks up one of those, you know, crystallized rock ornaments, like quartz or whatever, I don't know. But he beats this dude to death. And then he just, like, walks out of there. I mean, I mean it's just... Uh, this is what really annoyed me about this. We have been set up to see Jamie snap. We've been waiting for it. We knew something was going to happen. But in this scene on its own, in this setup, it, it's stupid to me. I'm like, why is it that he chooses to flip out and kill this guy? The guy was kind of being nice to him and giving him some information. And then he just doesn't say one thing, so he then beats him to death? I mean, I think a lot of us just accept it because it's been built up through this season like, hey, Jamie's gonna either hurt himself or hurt someone else quite badly. But I don't really think that this was earned. It, it felt really off to me and dumb, and it feels like as far as the show is concerned, it's just to set Jamie up as now like a villain, this snapped crazy guy, and it really loses all of the nuance that it had set up. But back in the present, Jamie goes to visit Ambrose. He just shows right up at his place and starts talking to his grandson, and Ambrose is all, can you get out of here? He straight up has to punch him to get him to leave, but as we've seen throughout this show, because Ambrose does end up having these connections with people involved in his cases, you know, it's been interesting because he's kind of been trying to prevent Jamie from doing something, but now it's sort of past the point of no return, and the dynamic has shifted, and I think, you know, Ambrose can really only do so much to help Jamie, but the episode ends here, and I would get into theories and whatnot, but we already have another episode to cover. Episode 6 happens, so... Be sure to be on the lookout for that episode review. What are you guys thinking so far? Let me know in the comments below what your theories and what's interesting you about the center. I'm interested because I'm still on board, but it, it's losing me. With like every episode, I'm just like, the center, why are you doing what you're doing? Thanks again for watching. I greatly appreciate it. Don't forget to like, share this video with your friends, and subscribe to watch this now to be on top of all of the latest uploads that you're gonna need. You need more channel subscriptions. It's, it's a need that you have.